टैग टीवी ब्रिंग्स यू डेली न्यूज बुलेटिन फ्रॉम इंडिया गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू साउथ एशिया न्यूज लाइन आई एम यश जॉनसॉन यर आर द टॉप स्टोरीज वी आर ट्रैकिंग फॉर यू ऑन वेंसडे द फर्स्ट ऑफ जून India and Bangladesh flag off third cross border train service Mithali Express. Pakistan's opposition PTI seeks permission from top court for another long march. And crisis hits Sri Lanka hikes tax rates to maximize government revenues. And now for all the details. India and Bangladesh on Wednesday flagged off a third cross-border passenger train service called Mithali Express between India's New Jalpaiguri and Bangladesh's Dhaka city. India's Railways Minister Ashwini Vaishnav called it yet another milestone in bolstering the friendship between the two countries. India's Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishnav and his Bangladeshi counterpart Mohammad Nurul Islam Sujon on Wednesday flagged off Mithali Express, a cross-border passenger train between India's new Jalpaiguri city and Bangladesh's Dhaka, via video conferencing from New Delhi. Speaking on the occasion, Vaishnav called the Mithali Express yet another milestone in bolstering the friendship between the two nations. while sujon remembered india's help in liberation of bangladesh in 1971 and shared ongoing efforts of bilateral engagement and development the mithali express is the third passenger train between the two nations the train service will run on sunday and wednesday from india and for the return journey it will run every monday and thursday from bangladesh it will cover a distance of around 513 kilometers in about 9 hours the relationship between the two country india and bangladesh is based upon our shared heritage our shared present and our shared future the development that we have in both the countries which is today accelerated in a very big way by the warm friendship between the two nations at the at all the levels This past Sunday the two countries also resumed Bandhan Express a passenger train service from India's Kolkata city to Khulna in Bangladesh after a two year covid induced hiatus many bangladeshi citizens come to avail specialized medical treatment in India Bandhan which translates to bond signifies the importance of international relations between India and Bangladesh At the 118 meeting of the permanent Indus Commission comprising Indus commissioners of India and Pakistan that concluded on Tuesday the annual report for the year ending on March 31 2022 was finalized and signed India's foreign ministry in a statement said that the two day meeting was held in a cordial manner India and Pakistan on Tuesday finalized and signed the annual report of the Permanent Indus Commission for the year which ended on 31st March 2022. The report was finalized at the 2-day 118th Permanent Indus Commission meeting in New Delhi between the two countries which concluded on Tuesday. The delegations were led by AK Pal Indian Commissioner for Indus Waters and his counterpart from Pakistan Syed Mohammad Meher Ali Shah. India's foreign ministry in its press release on Tuesday said that the meeting was held in a cordial manner and the commission appreciated the commitment of the two sides to interact frequently and resolve issues through bilateral discussions under the Indus Water Treaty as per the provisions of the Indus Water Treaty 1960 which deals with sharing of the waters of the six rivers of the Indus basin both countries must have Indus commissioners and the permanent Indus commission is to meet at least once every year alternatively in India and Pakistan the treaty gives control of eastern tributaries bias ravi and satluj to india and western tributaries indus chenab and jhelum to pakistan meanwhile it was agreed to hold the next meeting of the permanent indus commission in pakistan on mutually convenient dates in news from pakistan 
Pakistan South State Premier Imran Khan's PTI party has filed a petition in the Supreme Court seeking permission for a second long march rally to capital Islamabad to demand early elections, reports have suggested. This comes a day after Interior Minister Rana Sanaula warned PTI against such a move. Islamabad had turned into a battleground last Wednesday as multiple clashes took place between the police and PTI supporters. Pakistan's main opposition PTI, the Pakistan Tehreek Insaf Party, led by ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan, has filed a petition in the Supreme Court seeking permission for a second long march to capital Islamabad, reports suggested on Wednesday. PTI chairman Imran Khan had abruptly announced the end of his long march on May 26 and had given the incumbent government a six-day ultimatum to announce a date for general election. The petition came a day after Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah warned PTI against holding another long march. Last Wednesday, Islamabad had turned into a battleground as multiple clashes took place between the police and PTI supporters while Imran Khan tried to march towards the crucial De Chonk area, despite the Supreme Court's notice to hold the rally elsewhere in the city. The petition now seeks that the court order authorities that no force be used against the participants. Earlier on Tuesday, ruling PMLN party's Vice President Mariam Nawaz called Khan's anti-government movement anarchic and more dangerous than terrorism, which she asserted will be dealt with in iron hand. Imran Khan has been demanding snap elections since his ouster in April in a parliamentary vote. He has repeatedly accused that the United States conspired with the leaders of the incumbent government to topple him. Moving on, scores of activists and students recently staged a protest in Pakistan's capital Islamabad to demand safe recovery of Balochi student Firoz Baloch, who went missing on May 11th and demanded the release of Hafiz Baloch, a research scholar who they said was abducted by Pakistani spy agencies and imprisoned on false accusations. The protesters raised slogans against ongoing and forced disappearances and racial profiling of ethnic Baloch people. They highlighted Baloch people are being subjected to torture and harassment just for demanding basic rights of self-determination and right to life and education. Activists have long blamed that Pakistani army and spy agencies have been carrying so-called military operations in the region for years with an aim to eliminate the Baloch people. देखिए ना आप तो आप आईन को मानते हैं आप कानून को मानते हैं आप कानून के हर जाप्ते को मानते हैं लेकिन ये जो उठाने वाले हैं ये ना आईन को मानते हैं ना कानून को मानते हैं ना अदालतों को मानते हैं तो मुलजम तो ये लोग हैं और और फिर देखिए फिर ताले बिल्बो तक बात आ गई है इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम अफगानिस्तान since the Taliban took control of Afghanistan last August power shortage in southern Kandahar province is hurting the local economy Though the war may be over, but trouble continues as attacks on power lines disrupt the stable supply of electricity for running factories. Afghanistan, a war-torn country which is already beset by innumerable destabilizing factors since the Taliban took control mid-August, is facing power shortage, which is hurting the local economy in southern Kandahar province. Elham Hakmal, who manages a milk processing plant in Kandahar's industrial park, says that they have no electricity and they operate the power from generators. If power shortage continues for a long time, then they have to shut down all the plants, he added. Running factories need sufficient and stable sources of power. But in Afghanistan, almost all the infrastructure has been rigged or destroyed by decades of continuous conflict. برق موجود نلود. روز میشود چهل بار چیزی پیش خرید لگشتی. یعنی دزلاین دی. ام دارن گه پر چهل سنتی پار که داشتیم دست. موج درس او فابریکه دلودی. خود داغ فابریکه است. دکوت پشمی رسو فابریکه پاد. کشی رو وضعیت داغ سی جریانم که شاید داغ فابریکه هم لمن زولارس. افغانس کلیم داد دا تالیبان هاس بین پارتی رеспونسیبل فور دا سیچویشن. اس دی اتکت ترانسمیشن تاورز لاست یار. کازین بلک آوتس این کابیتال کابل و آدر پروینسز. Some poverty-stricken Afghans also blame the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan in the late 2001 on the excuse of fighting terror for the current mess. 
They blamed that U.S. during its 20 years of military presence in the country did not build any economic infrastructures, while they claimed that they have spent billions of dollars in Afghanistan. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's cash-strapped government has announced a taxation overhaul to boost revenue amid the country's crippling economic crisis, hiking value-added taxes and corporate income tax, and slashing the relief given to individual taxpayers. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe's government on Tuesday announced a taxation overhaul to boost revenue amid the country's crippling economic crisis. Vikrame Singhe, who also holds the finance ministry portfolio, plans to present an interim budget within weeks. He said measures were necessary as the current state of government finances was unsustainable. The implementation of a strong fiscal consolidation plan is imperative through revenue enhancement as well as expenditure rationalization measures in 2022, Vikrame Singhe's office said in a statement. An increase in value-added tax to 12% from 8% with immediate effect is among the key tax increases announced on Tuesday, which is expected to boost government revenues by 65 billion Sri Lankan rupees, that is 180.56 million US dollars. Other measures, including increasing corporate income tax to 30% from 24% from October, will earn an additional 52 billion rupees for the exchequer. Withholding tax on employment income has been made mandatory and exemptions for individual taxpayers have been reduced, the statement said. The island nation of 22 million people has been bettered by its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948, with a severe shortage of foreign currency, stalling imports of essentials including food, fuel and medicines. In an interview last month, Vikrame Singh said he would cut the expenditures down to the bone in the upcoming interim budget and reroute funds into a two-year relief program. Scores of Buddhist monks, devotees and students gathered in the northern Indian hill town of Dharamshala on Wednesday to attend the sermon of Tibetan spiritual leader Da Dalai Lama, which is taking place after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Dalai Lama advised on developing inner spirituality by practicing compassion instead of chasing material happiness. Hundreds of Buddhist monks, devotees and students from across the world flocked to the hill town of Dharamshala in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state on Wednesday to attend the two-day teachings of Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. The sermon by Nobel Peace Laureate Dalai Lama took place after a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic at the main Buddhist monastery in the town. The teachings primarily aimed at motivating youngsters into learning Buddhism at academic level and to instill a deeper understanding of Tibetan Buddhist culture by practicing compassion instead of chasing material happiness. This is a very big special ceremony uh, on behalf of His Holiness. Uh, it is uh, it is happened after two year lockdown. So it is basically uh, an advice of His Holiness to the people to develop their inner spiritual. So it is happened uh, after a long journey, after a long period. So uh, so it is very important for the people of Tibetan to listen to His Holiness' words. The Dalai Lama has lived in exile in India since a failed uprising against Chinese rule in Tibet in 1959. He was conferred the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989. Indian singer-composer Krishna Kumar Kunnat, better known as KK, passed away on Tuesday after falling ill while performing at a crowded indoor stadium in eastern Kolkata city. The iconic 53-year-old singer was rushed to a hospital where he was declared dead. One of the most versatile singers of the Indian film industry, KK had recorded songs in several languages, sung for Bollywood films and music albums, and frequently performed at live concerts. He became famous among the music lovers with his first album, Pal. He is survived by his wife and two children. KK's untimely demise has sent shockwaves across the nation. Tributes to the singer poured in on social media, with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and several Bollywood singers, actors and fans expressing condolences. The West Bengal government on Wednesday paid last respect with gun salute. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee supervised the proceedings and paid tributes to the singer. His last rites will be conducted in Mumbai.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.